Let's take a few moments to look at interrogative pronouns in German. What I want to do in this presentation is to look at to look first at some interrogative pronouns in English before moving to a discussion of their German equivalent. From there, I want to talk about word order in sentences that use interrogative pronouns and then to conclude our presentation with a review of the interrogative pronoun welch and the interrogative pronoun wer. Now, we use interrogative pronouns all the time in English. Some of the more common ones are which, when, what, why, who, and whom. Now, the last two sentences on the screen, who sees her and whom does she see, make use of two related interrogative pronouns, who and whom. Unfortunately, in English, we don't distinguish between these two forms very uh, critically. In German, however, the distinction between these are essential. Now, the equivalent of these sentences are in German, Welche Lampe hat sie? Wann kommt sie? Was machen sie? Warum machen sie das? Wer sieht sie? And wen sieht sie? Now, you'll notice that as in both in German and in English, the interrogative pronouns, which I've highlighted here in German, uh, I've highlighted here in red, um, they all come at the beginning of the sentence. That's because, as you'll recall from our discussions of asking, our discussion of a how to ask a question in German, um, when we ask a question, the, the word order, the syntax of the sentence is changed. If we're asking a simple question that requires a simple yes-no answer, the verb will come in the first position. However, if we're digging for more information, we'll want to put the interrogative pronoun in the first position at the beginning of the sentence. Now, invariably, the verb will always come in the second position. Here, in this sentence, wann kommt der, when is he coming, I put the third person singular personal pronoun, er, or he, in the third position. I will want to get this as close to the verb as possible. However, once I've done that, I could fill out the remainder of the sentence, the remainder of the third position, with any other information I deem useful for the question. Now, you'll recall from our discussion of the der word, welcher, that it changes, the masculine form of the der word, welcher, changes as it moves from a nominative to an accusative environment. The stem, the root of the der word, or here, interrogative pronoun, welch, in the nominative case, adds an ER ending. In the accusative case, it changes to add an EN ending. So let's take a look at that in some examples. Welcher Tisch ist schön? Which table is beautiful? Now, I'm going to use the nominative form of welcher because I'm talking about the quality of the table, its attribute. The table isn't performing any action. Therefore, it's going to be in the nominative case. The interrogative pronoun, welcher, comes at the beginning of the sentence because I'm asking a question. What table is beautiful? Now, if I introduce another noun, another uh, if I introduce a subject into the sentence that performs an action, that will move the interrogative pronoun, welcher, into the accusative. Welchen Tisch hat er? He, or er, is the subject of the sentence, and he's performing an action. This action is reflected in the verb hat. He's having. Now, something has to receive the action of being had 
and that is the table, or specifically version tish, which table. Therefore, it's going to be in the accusative case. Nevertheless, I put the interrogative pronoun version at the beginning of the sentence because I'm asking a question. What's most important here to notice is that there is a change in the form. Welcher goes to welchen. This same idea is also found in the way we use the interrogative pronoun wer. Now, wer simply means who. The accusative form of wer or wen is the form in English whom. So, let's take a look at the sentence you see at the bottom of your screen. Wer sieht sie? Who sees her? Now, I have the nominative form of wer. This is actually the subject of the sentence. So, even though it is a question, and the interrogative pronoun will go at the beginning of the sentence anyway. It's also the subject of the sentence because it's in the nominative case. This interrogative pronoun is actually the subject of the sentence performing the action. Who sees? Now, the, 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 the noun that receives the action of being seen is Z, the third third person singular pronoun. Now, I'm going to mix things up a bit and make it into an accusative. Vain zit z. Now, what I've done here is I've moved the interrogative pronoun ver from a nominative environment to an accusative environment. And in so doing, I've actually flipped the sentence. No longer does the personal pronoun Z receive the action of being seen, but now she's actually the one who's doing the scene. Z, Z, she sees. Now, something has to receive the action of being seen, and that's going to be the accusative interrogative pronoun vain, or as you would say in English, whom. So, even though this interrogative pronoun in the accusative case comes at the beginning of the sentence, it has to do that because I'm asking a question. What's important to realize is that the form of this interrogative pronoun, the accusative form, indicates that it actually receives the, it receives the action of the verb. Whom does she see? So, in German, it's critical to note that even though we can use word order to underscore the logic of a sentence, more important is the form of the verbs, the form of the pronouns. This will indicate who is performing the action and 